All right. And then. Okay, so I want to just welcome everybody to Hungry Hippos and DSN collaborating together. Um, I want to thank Susan Harari. We are going to be making an summer like healthy blueberry crumble today and Susan is so smart that she is also going to show us how we can make it um, individually served so that we can respect social distancing this summer um, but also find creative ways to still entertain because that's what we do here right so exactly. thank you to Susan. Um, she's of Hungry Hippos. You probably all know that already, but if you didn't, you have to follow her. Um, as I have said in other videos, she's responsible for the Twix that are going crazy in our community. I think everyone's gaining at least four pounds from them because of how much they're eating them. And today we've got the blueberry crumble. So I'll tell you, take it away and thank you. Thank you. So I'm Susan and so today we're going to be making individual blueberry crumble pies. So I originally made it as well, you know, one big pie thinking me, my own family. And then I came up with the idea that, you know, we're, could we could possibly be somewhat entertaining. If we do, we really want to be conscious of that and make sure that we're really being safe. And so that's why the idea came to us that we should do individual ones so that everyone could be able to have their own and also who doesn't like their own dessert, I mean, come on, just for them. And it's portioned, so which is also good too. So we're gonna be putting it into, you know, separate little ramekins you could put it into and different ideas. And then that's the way that you can serve them. So, which is a great idea. Another thing that I thought of that I really wanted to share with you guys is just a few ways that I'm also trying to stay healthy during quarantine. So besides for entertaining and all that, we're also, if you are making it for yourself, which I usually do, you know, that's great too. So I just wanted to share like maybe three tips and just if it could bring anything to you guys, that would be great. So just the first thing that I wanted to share was, you know, setting up an eating schedule. Maybe now it's a little bit different for everyone now that we're all home and our kids are home. And so either if you're single and you're maybe like sleeping late and you're not on schedule because you don't have school or something like that, you might be sleeping late and skipping breakfast. Or if you're really busy with your kids in the morning, you might be skipping that too. You might be skipping breakfast too. Exactly. I know my customers. And so, oh, yeah. It's really important not to skip meals and to make sure that you're setting your breakfast, your lunch, your dinner, and making sure not to skip breakfast because you might end up overeating later on in a different meal, which I know happens to me personally. If I skip breakfast, I'm like cranky, and then I end up overeating somewhere, maybe dessert late at night because I don't know. So it really sets me back and making sure that you're really not skipping those meals. The second thing that um, I always tell people, I'm sure if you follow me, you'll know that I hear that you'll hear this from me that, you know, the, really the key to success in anything in life is really preparation. So whether it's work, in school and business, you really need to prepare before anything. So with being healthy, I know for me, when I have a busy schedule, when I prep, you know, a few muffins for breakfast, that really helps me that covers you know, uh, one big meal and a part of my day. So even now we're making these um, blueberry crumb pies. Like that could be your breakfast. It's healthy enough. It has um, your fruit and your good carbs. And, you know, that's already set and done so that you have it. And even prepping, you know, a few vegetables, if you're making it in the oven, just throw in as many as you can. Don't think about it. And it really helps you for the rest of the week. And then lastly, which is another thing that I always stress to people is really mindful eating. So what I mean by that is really tuning in to your hunger cues, to your fullness cues, and making sure that, you know, you wake up, you have your breakfast, you know, you ask yourself, um, are you hungry? Are you full? And for me being home, I know this is like something struggle for me would be, um, sometimes I'm bored, let's say, not bored, but 
after lunch, I just want something sweet or, you know, the closet's right there, the kitchen's right here. I don't live in a huge <laughs> apartment, but, you know, I might just go mindlessly into the closets and start snacking. And sometimes that could affect you in a negative way. So just making sure that you're mindful. If you are hungry for the snack, go for it and make sure there's protein in it and fruit and something to keep you full till dinner. But if not, just asking yourself, like, am I hungry? Am I bored? Maybe try drinking water. That helps for me. Sometimes it could be masked, you know, because you're really thirsty and you're not drinking enough water throughout the day. So that was just another thing, maybe, you know, having your water bottle, seeing if you're still hungry, then go for that snack. So those are my three tips for, you know, staying healthy in quarantine. And now we can start our blueberry crumble pies. So we're going to start. This is a great, also quick and easy recipe. It's actually a one bowl recipe. So we're really not dirtying anything. And I'm going to show you guys how quick it could be to, you know, make something that's delicious and healthy. And it won't take up too much of your time. So we're going to start with our blueberries. So here I have my blueberries that I already washed, but you can use any fruit that you like, really. You can do raspberries, you could do strawberries and make it like a strawberry crumb pie. Like I would love that too. I love strawberries. So a peach pie, you could add peach and blueberries. You could really have fun with it. And also just, you know, if you have things in your refrigerator that you want to use up, throw it in there. So we have our blueberries. We have our maple syrup as our sweetener, avocado oil, which is our oil that we're, we've been using. And of course, if you need to substitute it, you can substitute it for coconut oil or any other oil that you have on hand. We have our cinnamon, oats, lemon juice, vanilla, and applesauce. Also with the applesauce, like I mentioned in my previous class, if you don't have applesauce, a mashed banana, great substitute. And especially in this, because again, another fruit, just making it summery and light and interesting and delicious. So I would do that too. I have applesauce, so I'm gonna use that for now, but. Can you just make sure you tell us what the quant quantity is of each? Oh yeah, I was just introducing the ingredients. And now we'll start. So oh, now no, no worries, that's great. Thank you. No problem. So let's start with four cups of blueberries. So this is gonna be like the bottom of the. I'm just gonna pour it. Out. This is the bottom of the pie. This is like the under part. So we're just making that first, and then we'll make that crumb topping. And again, just so that everyone knows, the a recipe will be in the chat on Zoom. We'll also be posting the recording of Susan on DSN's Instagram, um, not Instagram, website after, um, after the class. Um, it'll be up probably tomorrow. So can the blueberries be frozen? They could be frozen, yeah, for sure. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so we're doing our four cups of blueberries. Then we're gonna be doing two tablespoons of maple syrup. So the recipe says a fourth cup, but I'm dividing it between the blueberries and the crumb. So when it says divided, don't get confused. It's not like split in half. It's just that I'm putting two tablespoons with the blueberries. This is our underneath part of our crumb cake. So we have our four cups. Now we're doing two tablespoons of maple syrup. So I love maple syrup. It's one of my favorite sweeteners with anything. I put it in my muffins. I put it in my cakes and it's just healthier than any of those processed sugars. And it doesn't make anything too sweet. It's actually, I, I find that it's perfect. You don't need to use a lot of it, but if you needed to substitute this and you didn't have maple syrup on hand, you can also use honey. So honey is a great alternative to maple syrup. And like I say, so, liquid sweeteners need to be substituted with other liquid sweeteners. So I also have coconut sugar, but I wouldn't substitute maple syrup for coconut sugar. So that's just a tip for liquid sweeteners and substituting that. Then we're gonna do a one teaspoon of lemon juice. And the lemon juice really brings out the flavor of the blueberries and it just makes it more refreshing and delicious. So one teaspoon of lemon juice. You could do fresh lemon juice. I have this lemon juice in the bottle. Um, you could do the one 
real lemon juice, doesn't matter. So one teaspoon of lemon juice. Okay. Then I'm gonna do our, so now we're gonna mix that around. And also, if you didn't already do it, let's preheat our ovens to 350 degrees. You could bake this later on. You don't have to bake it right now if you don't want to, but I'm gonna bake it now. So 350, let's preheat our ovens. And also, I wanna show you guys what I'm gonna be putting the crumb pies in. So these are like two ramekins. So it's gonna probably make like five individual pies. So five ramekins you can do. I also have these, which are so cute, like these little cast iron skillets, which are a little bit deeper, as you can see. So it could fill up more. So that's why I'm just gonna do four of these. But if you were doing regular size ramekins, I would do five of them. And you don't really need to spray them with oil. You can if you want to, but it's not something that's gonna really stick to the bottom. But you can if you want to. So whatever you want, up to you. So now we are mixing that together. And now we're gonna fill up each of our ramekins with the blueberry mixture. So this is gonna get like bubbly and you know cooked through. And then we're gonna put the topping on it after. And you're gonna see it's gonna come out delicious. So filling it up. You could fill it up three quarters of the way. And then we're also, we have a lot of topping to fill. So you want to make sure that you're leaving room for that. So I'm just showing you guys that my blueberries are in it. And now I'm setting that aside. And then I have these little cast iron, which I love. If you really do, this is a great purchase. It really makes everything delicious. I even put pasta in here if I'm making like a mac and cheese. But I also put it, you know, cookie skillets in here, which is great, like a deep dish cookie pie skillet, awesome. And I also have like an Amazon store on my Instagram page, if you guys wanna check it out, with, you know, different ramekins and all my favorite muffin tins and baking banana bread tins. So if you guys wanna check that out, check that out. Okay, so I'm just filling the rest of these with the rest of the blueberries. I'm just gonna pour it in and splitting that up into four, and then we'll get to our toppings. Okay, pouring that in. Okay, so now I'm putting it aside. I have my blueberries. That is done, and now we're doing our topping. So now we could really use the same bowl for the topping, which is so easy, super easy. Same bowl, no dirtying, no messing. I know we're doing a lot of that these days, but this one's a good one. So now we're using our oats and I'm using rolled oats. You can use quick oats. I just like rolled oats because they're a little bit thicker and you know, more like granola. Like if you were making granola, you'd want to use rolled oats rather than quick oats. But if you have quick oats, you can use quick oats too. It'll still be delicious. So we're using three cups of rolled oats. So we're measuring out our rolled oats. Two cups. One more cup, so that equals three cups. We have our three cups of oats, and if anyone just joined, this is our topping. We did our blueberries first with maple syrup and lemon juice, and we mixed that together, and now we're doing our topping. So, our topping is our oats. Then we're gonna do a half a cup of applesauce. Can I use old fashioned oats? Yes, you can use old fashioned oats. These are old fashioned oats. And also if you have quick oats, you can also use quick oats um, if you need to, which is fine also. It'll still come out good. But I do recommend rolled oats. So if you have it, use it. And now we're gonna do our half a cup of applesauce. Now, again, like I said before, if you didn't have applesauce, you could use a mashed banana, which would be delicious in this recipe. So, um, measuring this out, a half a cup of unsweetened applesauce, I prefer, since applesauce is sweet already and we're, since we're sweetening everything else. So, and these are like actually really good to have, these little cups of applesauce because it just stays longer and it's easy, no mess. 
and you can throw it out when you're done. So now we're doing our applesauce and also there's really no, you know, steps to this for the, for the topping. It doesn't have to be wet ingredients, dry ingredients. We're just throwing it all together. So that was our half a cup of um, app, applesauce or your mashed banana. And then we're gonna do a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Somebody cinnamon. asked if you can just sweeten the topping and not the fruit. Oh yeah, for sure. You don't have to sweeten the topping since you know your blueberries might be sweet already or if you're using something else. Also, you could do this with apples. That would be so delicious, an apple crumb. I love apple, anything, so that's good too. And so when, yeah, when your fruit is sweet enough already, you don't have to. I mean, it's two tablespoons, but of course up to you. Fruit is sweet, it doesn't really need it. The topping, I do recommend though. So now we're doing our half teaspoon of cinnamon and really a half teaspoon of cinnamon goes a long way. And it's gonna give you that yummy, topping cinnamon flavor. Okay, so a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Then we have our vanilla, vanilla extract, a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I always double that. <laughs> I know, I love vanilla. I really want to get like vanilla bean paste, whatever that, it's so fancy, but probably so worth it. <laughs> then um, we have our fourth cup of avocado oil. And again, you can substitute it for a different oil if you need to. So one fourth cup of avocado oil, which is great. And this is really gonna be binding it together and giving it that crispy granola type of topping. What about the option to use tapioca starch? Yeah. The tapioca starch was for the blueberries. But if you don't have it, it's optional. So the tapioca starch, it was one tablespoon of tapioca starch in the blueberries. And what the tapioca starch does, it's really like a thickening agent. So you could compare it to like cornstarch and it'll just make the blueberries, you know, really get cooked through and it'll be like mushy, but, but good. Like, so if you, if you have tapioca starch, I would use that. I use it in a lot of my baking recipes. I use it in my cookies. It, it's a good ingredient to invest in, to buy, and there's ways to use it. So it's, it's a good one. So if you do use it, we're put, you would put it in the blueberries. Can I use cornstarch instead? Yes, but you have to use, if you're using cornstarch, then I would use half the amount because it's not like a direct substitution. So I would use half the amount of, for cornstarch, for tapioca starch. So now we have all our ingredients in our bowl. We have our oats, we have our applesauce, we have our cinnamon, vanilla, and oil. That, this is our top, topping, and now we can mix that together. And now we're mixing it, and you just wanna make sure that everything's getting incorporated evenly, and you could kinda of tell, by the way, that the cinnamon goes and spreads evenly and coats all the oats just like you would like in a granola, you really wanna make sure that everything is fully, fully incorporated. Okay. And this is what it should look like. I'm gonna show you in a second. Okay, so we mix that together and it kind of looks like a granola. <laughs> and if you smell it, it smells so delicious and cinnamony and oaty and just so good. And now I'm gonna put it into my individual ramekins and my individual cast iron mini skillets. And it's actually also so perfect if you do put them away. This is kind of like what I do with my overnight oats, which is another thing that I would prepare for myself. And since it's already in individual cups, it's great for you to use, to take out of your fridge, to, you know, have, give it to your kids as a quick breakfast, or even obviously just for yourself. So that's good. So this is how much I would like fill it. I wouldn't go overboard, even though you could put it on a tray. So, you know, it's not like overflowing, but it's to the top. It's not gonna explode really like a cookie or a muffin or something like that would. So it's no big deal. And of course, when you're entertaining, you could 
prep these in advance and you could keep them in your refrigerator and then bake it right before, you know, your company or like that. So it's a great thing that you can do in advance and have it come out fresh and it's so delicious. Okay. And then you could also make it into a pie if you like that. So you have that option also. Love that. Mm -hmm. So here I'm putting it in this. And going with that one. And this. So now after we put all our crumb topping on top, we're gonna bake it in the oven on 350 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes. And you'll be able to tell when the top is like golden brown and a little bit crispy, but the bottom, the inside, the blueberries, they're gonna be like bubbling. And I did this before, you don't have to cover it, but if you wanted to, you can, which kind of would make the blueberries cook through. So if you want, for the last five minutes, you can cover it with tinfoil, put it in the, like, put it back in the oven, just to make sure that the bottom, but if you like your fruit, you know, crispy and good, so it, it'll come out good. Um, somebody asked, is it better to freeze it raw or baked if you're freezing it? So I would freeze it raw. I kind of like, I, I don't know, I like doing that better because sometimes when you cook it and then you freeze it, it might get a little soggy. So I would freeze it raw and then bake it and it'll come out much better, I think. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. So here it is. So cute. Delicious and looking and healthy on top of it. And healthy on top of it, but you won't know the difference, trust me. And also, I would serve it, you know, you can serve it with ice cream, vanilla ice cream on top, which is a cute way to, you know, entertain people and add something to it. And then for breakfast, you can also add like Greek yogurt if you wanted to add a little bit of protein to it, which is great thing and will make it even more delicious. So there's so many things that you can do with this. And another great way to entertain and to also prep yourself for breakfast and something healthy. So that's that. And then we're, so like I said, we'll bake it for 30 to 35 minutes in your oven. And you also, I always have these things, but you can also put like a whipped coconut cream on top. You could put, there's so many things to add to it. And there's so many different things, different fruits that you can use to make it interesting and to switch things up and strawberries, different uh, peaches, you know, there's so many things in season right now that you guys could discover and also make it your own. So if you guys do make it, please send me pictures, send DSN pictures. That would be great. I love to hear from you guys. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. Easy blueberry crumble individual pies. <laughs> Delicious. So I'll just see if anyone else has any questions. Please write on the group chat for Zoom. Otherwise, if you didn't catch anything, this is going to go up on the DSN website, um, along with my cool do for the day. Um, more importantly, though, we have Susan's wonderful, healthy blueberry recipe that can be made as one big pie or individually um, this summer. So yeah, we, on behalf of DSN, we want to thank you so much for doing this for us. I'm really excited. Um, I know that last week your lemon all of <laughs> summer cake was fantastic. And so I like that we're keeping up with the theme of healthy but delicious and easy for summer. So thank you for that. And um, I guess that's about it. So I'm really looking forward to trying this yummy recipe. Let's try it. And if anyone has questions while they're making it, feel free to DM me on Instagram. I'm Hungry Hippos. Right, at the hungry hippos underscore. It's a weird thing, but anyway, yeah, uh, ask me any questions and yes. You're very okay. accessible. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Um, and yeah, that's it. All right, everybody, go outside, enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. <laughs> All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
Bye.